In this video, I'm gonna look at how YouTube affects the sounds you hear in my videos. There are plenty of comments when I compare synths about how YouTube's algorithm is making it an unrealistic or pointless <laughs> exercise because it makes such dramatic changes apparently to the sound. So I've decided to do a little test myself and this was prompted by me taking a look at how the digital filters of the Hydra synth stack up against some of the of the of the analog ones in the studio. So really in preempting some of the questions that'll raise really and doing a little bit of investigative work before I start. So in this I'll take a look at a little track I made for my OBX8 video, which if I've edited this in the way I'm hoping will be playing in the background right now and I'll check the original lossless file with what comes back after uploading it to YouTube. And I've done the same thing with a filter sweep from my Minimoog because I do a lot of filter sweeps here. So it'd be interesting to hear the difference the YouTube compression algorithm makes and if it's at all significant. Okay, on the top we've got the original audio from a video I uploaded to YouTube and I've recorded that directly back into Logic, this one here in red. So here's the original audio. And then this is the YouTube version. And what have I done here? Well, I've matched the gain as much as I possibly can. You can see down here on the right, I've got a gain of minus 1.8 dB on the YouTube version. And then I've used Eventide's Precision Time Align tool. And when you put those together and invert them, so basically what I'm doing is getting them as in time as I possibly can. If we zoom in, you can see they're pretty much as in time as you can get them. So get them as in time as I can and use the precision time align to get them exactly spot on. So, there we go. That's the remaining signal. Go to a louder bit of the track. So what we're listening to there is the difference between the two clips, which is the difference caused by the YouTube compression algorithms. And just to show that if I phase invert the same file against itself, you hear absolutely nothing. So if it was perfectly recreated and you phase invert, you get absolutely nothing. But we don't, we get this. Now, admittedly, that's very quiet, but there is a fair amount of noise. And I'll just show how this works, really, just so that you can see what I've done. I've delayed by 0.11 samples, however it does that. But if I bring in or change the phase slightly, you can start hearing it. They're not phasey, but when they're exactly matched, So just to make sure I get it as aligned as possible, I'm using Brainworks Meter. I'm trying to get the RMS as low as I can. It was around 32 there, wasn't it? So somewhere around there is about as minimum as I'm gonna get it. If I undo the phase invert, so put them together, it'll double the signal. Here we go, so we're getting an RMS here of around, what's that about, eight, seven, eight, nine. And then when I bring in the second signal, it drops down from minus seven to minus 32. So that's a difference of about, about 25, something like that. Just over 20 anyway, and a difference of over 20 is a quarter of the volume or a hundredth, I think, of the sound pressure level. That's the way the decibel scale works anyway. So moving over to this section here, that's about a quarter of the volume of this. But we are getting rumbles down on the bass. And if we look between sort of 50 and 100 hertz, we're getting quite a lot of signal there. So you'd think the difference between the original signal and the signal from YouTube would be different. But 
look at this here around just coming up to around the 10 db mark at about 75 hertz if we go to the original it's identical so even though we've got this sort of amount of noise in the system we don't seem to be losing much of that low end so perhaps it's just not that perceptible perhaps it's just my brain looking for differences but when i had them on the speakers i felt like a, i could feel a bit more punch in the original version but you know you know i'm not confident <laughs> but i am confident it's nothing you'd hear in your earbuds or most headphones laptops or tvs unless you've got it plugged into something rather expensive and you listen very very carefully perhaps things like me web tales and ambiences are more obvious now you can see the section here i've got red blue red blue so i'd say close your eyes and see if you can tell when it's changing from onto that and i know this is going back through youtube's algorithm for you and it, i'm sure it probably adds a little bit more or takes a little bit more away every time you put it through the algorithm uh, so it doesn't really make much sense to do this but i'm not going to go down a sort of never-ending spiral of, of youtube algorithms but just take a listen see if it makes any difference Remember, close your eyes. So if you didn't use your eyes, could you tell, could you hear the changes? I've got to say, I'm sitting, listening to this through, what have we got here? Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pros, and I can't tell. And through my KH310, the Neumann uh, monitors, I couldn't tell either, to be honest. So there you go, on complete mixes, there is a fair bit taken out, but it doesn't seem to impact on the sound that much it doesn't make it sound digital it's not really lacking in most frequencies except for those lower 40 to 80 hertz but they don't seem to be lacking in any of the single channels either really peculiar mainly just noise so let's take a look at some individual filter sweeps now and see what it's doing to an individual tone. Okay, here's a filter sweep from a Mini Moog and you might want to turn your speakers or your headphones down because these do get rather squeaky. So five, four, three, two, one. And below that in red, I've got the same filter sweep after it's been uploaded to YouTube and recorded it back into Logic, playing it live from the internet. And you can see here, we've got the click track from Logic that comes in just before the recording. So I'm doing the same as I did with that track earlier. And this is where we see the limitations, not only of YouTube, but of recording things to video. So if we come to this, I won't play the sound on this because it's just squeaks. But the Minimo's got a really bright filter. It goes up to 28 kilohertz. We can see that there. That's a high resonant peak. And this was recorded at 192 kilohertz. We've seen we've got up to 96 there. But recorded at 192 just to record everything and see what gets lost. Because 4K and 1080p videos only record, or at least I can only save them or render them to 48 kilohertz from Final Cut Pro. So that's the original Minimoog. And if we compare that now to the rendered video file, we can see we've lost all the information down here. The bottom one here is the original recording at 192 kilohertz. And the top one is the one that was rendered from the video. And you can see we've lost all this information over 20 kilohertz. So there is a limitation, but not one that anyone can hear. There's a very steep drop around 20 kilohertz, but under that, the spectrum is almost identical. It's not like we're getting any steep drops before that. So where anyone can hear, we're getting the same signal through. So I say where anyone can hear, I think um, 17 kilohertz is anyone under 24, 16 is anyone under 30, 15 is anyone under 40, and all those sort of famous producers that pop up doing waves, plugins uh, can only hear 
from around 12 when you're in your 60s apparently or up to around 12 so all this is lost anyway and if you weren't aware that's one of the reasons why 44.1 was chosen as the standard for cds because it allows frequencies of up to 22 to be recorded you need double the frequency to record the complete wave and that's all digital audio theory which again i'm not going to get into here but essentially 44.1 means recordings capture every frequency the human here is capable of hearing and all these are 48 so the higher than cd quality but yes there are differences from the studio to YouTube and into your monitors, but nothing that I suspect you could have heard anyway. So moving on to the differences between the video file and the YouTube version, that's what we've got here. The top one is the video file, the bottom one is the YouTube version. You can see we've got the steep drop off, but these are very, very similar. I mean, looking at this bit here, for example, we've got the one lump here, a little lump, then a larger lump, then we've got three lumps, and then we've got this sort of muted two lumps and we've got a shallow one and a steep one a shallow one and a steep one so really really super similar and just to show these aren't the same file if we just come back here for example we can see we've got a bit more noise happening maybe in the in the youtube version down here for example but that noise is really quiet it's about where's that that's at minus 75 and this signal here is at around 42 so it's about a 30 db difference or 30 db drop or the noise is around 30 dB less, perhaps, I don't know. But I'm really looking for things here, I'm really sort of picking. If we come back to the logic file, I've done the same as I've done before, I've put the Brainworks meters on to get the, um, to get the gain identical, and I've used the even type precision timer line. You can see I've got a sample difference of 3.36. Oh, and then we've got the delay time as 0.07 milliseconds, <laughs> wow. So, if I play them, one at a time. So let's play the YouTube one first. And then bring in the original file. And I'll loop it around this bit here just so we can get some idea of signal levels. So the original signals are around minus eight, minus nine. And the signals together, or the difference between the signals is minus 39, minus 40, minus 41. So yeah. 30 dB difference. So we're getting noise in there. You can hear that low level noise. And we're getting a little bit of the original signal through. Let's take a look at what that looks like on this. So a bit of noise down there between 80 and 100. And then some of the original signal, the main signal, is still coming through, which means there are differences in there, but quite minor considering the 30 dB less. 30 dB is one thousandth of the sound pressure level one eighth of the sound and i did look this up and it's the same difference as the sound level you get in a very quiet library compared with a flushing toilet <laughs> but you know you can hear it's not completely cancelled but would that minor difference impact on how a sound is perceived i don't think so i'll play them both again but yeah i do get the irony here you'll be hearing one that's been through youtube twice <laughs> one that's been through youtube once um, but maybe you won't be uh, well you won't be hearing exactly the same thing as me but maybe the differences will be similar but if you really are interested i will Put up the original files on my Patreon pages. Anyway, let's start off with the YouTube one. And then play the original, well, the original video audio. And YouTube once more. Did I hear some little squeaky bits at the very start there? Yeah, that's on the original audio as well. Am I obsessing over something very minor? <laughs> I think I am. You know, I don't think the algorithm's stripping enough away for it to impact on anything. I don't think it's adding too many artifacts for it to not be accurately representing what I'm hearing coming live from the synth. I have to say, I was expecting to find something more obvious, so I'm actually 
pleasantly surprised. So there we have it, as expected, the YouTube compression algorithm is doing something to the sound, but is that significant? I just don't think so. I don't think it's changing the character of a synth. It didn't make the mini mode, for example, sound digital. We got some artifacts in there from the compression when it changed uh, in the video rendering from 192 to 48, but if I recorded it at 48, we might not get those anyway. That's another test. Here, I was just testing, does YouTube significantly change the character of stuff? And I think the answer has to be no. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. And if it was, please think about subscribing. If you do want to geek out and you want to get those original files, join me over on Patreon, £3 a month, price of a coffee, well worth it. And it really does help to support the channel. So I will see you next time.